Okay, everyone, now let's take a look at teacher rights. Okay, so the story of teacher rights stretches back to 1968, when teachers were first sort of granted formal rights as teachers under the Constitution. Uh, in that case, Pickering versus the Board of Education, you had a high school a teacher who was complaining about the use of school funding to support athletic fields, and he wrote a very scathing letter to the newspaper, and the local board of education tried to fire him because of it. And, of course, the the Supreme Court was like, hey, no, on matters of public concern, we have, teachers have a right to be able to speak out. And in particular, they looked at these three factors listed there in Pickering, and we still refer to that today as the Pickering balancing test. We balance the relationship with supervisors and coworkers, the classroom performance and whether or not it affects classroom performance, and whether or not it affects the overall operations of the school. So that's the core balancing test that lies at the heart of teacher rights. Okay, now, on since that time in 1968, we've been sort of narrowing and providing more definition to it. In 1977, we said, well, even if there's a free speech issue, teachers can still be fired for other issues. And in 1983, we really focused on only matters of public concern are protected. Anything that's a private grievance between a particular teacher and the school that's not protected by the Constitution. Fine. That was the law of teacher rights for sort of the last 50 years until 2007 when we had a major new Supreme Court case that did not even emerge out of the education context, but it really redefined uh, how we think about teacher rights. Okay, And so you might not be able to see all of that down there at the bottom, but what it does is it takes this Garcetti test, which specifically says only matters of public concern that are outside of an, a school official's job responsibilities can be protected. So the, it puts a question up in front of the Pickering balancing test that asks whether or not the speech was made pursuant to official job duties. If it was made pursuant to official job duties, then you never reach the Pickering balancing test to even try to protect that employee's speech. Okay, so that case happened in 2007, and immediately thereafter it has had a chilling effect on teacher expression rights all over the United States, what teachers can and cannot say both as teachers and just in public spaces has really been limited since that time. We'll talk more in class. Obviously, I have some some mixed feelings about this case, and we'll we'll chat about it in class a little bit more. And we'll give you I'll give you some examples of some of the cases that have come down uh, since that time. But, but this is really the core issue, and especially for you early career teachers, pre-tenure teachers, subject to potential non-renewal provisions, as you'll see in the other module. Really, you have to be very cautious early in your career how publicly you speak out against anything that's going on at the school. It used to be that some of that might have been protected, but nowadays, if, it, if it's really related to your job as a teacher, there's a chance it might not be protected, and you could lose your job over something that you, you said. So just be very cautious around it. Next big topic is around teacher lifestyle choices, okay? So beyond expression, which is where you're trying to constitutionally protect some actual speech that you make as a teacher, how involved can the school be in regulating your lifestyle as a teacher? Now, uh, the answer to this is it can be somewhat involved. And you ask, why? I mean, it, it shouldn't have any role in how I choose to live my life. Well, historically, we've always held teachers to a higher standard. You've heard that before. You've probably seen the EPSB teacher ethics guidelines published. All of that is adding up to say that, hey, teachers, you all are held to a higher standard than the rest of society. And we want, because you're teaching young, impressionable youth, 
we don't want you engaging in activities in your private lives that uh, have negative consequences for communities. All right, so that is sort of at the root of why we let school boards have some say in teacher lifestyle choices. We'll talk much more about it in class, but at the root of all this, there has to be some connection, the nexus word again, between a teacher's conduct and disruption. Okay, that still sort of has to be there. Now, you all I'm sure are thinking, well, don't I have some privacy rights in my own teaching career? And yes, you do, but they're all very limited. The Fourth Amendment around searches and seizures, the Ninth Amendment in some privacy, and the Fourteenth Amendment in particularly the Due Process Clause, which is so impactful. Again, you're going to see that come up on the teacher due process rights. Those can protect you, but only in a, a limited way. And uh, while we've seen courts protect teachers' lifestyle choices on occasion, much of the time school boards can take either unofficial or potentially even official actions against teachers for lifestyle choices and that, that can result in teachers having negative job outcomes and potentially even being fired. So fine, what are some of those lifestyle choices? Let's see what my last slide is. Here's some of those teachers engaged in adulterous behavior. Uh, in the past, even divorces, pregnancies out of wedlock, and homosexual conduct have been uh, reasons that school boards have regulated teacher lifestyle choices. Nowadays, involvement in drug usage. Obviously, we have a very shifting marijuana culture in this country right now, but certainly teachers are going to be dismissed for that in some areas and maybe not in other areas. Teacher um, alcohol usage and getting busted for drinking and driving has resulted in negative job consequences, even though that happens very outside the work environment. So these kinds of lifestyle issues that pop up in all different forms, yes, school boards have some role. It's really been diminished over time, but they're not entirely separate because we do hold teachers to that higher standard. We'll talk much more about that, give some examples of both expression rights and lifestyle choices that have come up in the last few years in class. I'll see you then.